Live for the clan. That's what my father always said. Cyanvert remembered these words as he knelt in the midst of a chaotic battlefield. Blood dripped down his face, mingling with the grime and sweat of combat. His father's words echoed in his mind, reminding him of his duty, to desire nothing, to remain a shadow by his brother's side. Yet here he was, alone against the continent's strongest commanders. He sat on his knees, surrounded by the fallen bodies of knights, both friend and foe. A group of knights, still standing, watched him with a mix of awe and caution. One of them remarked in disbelief about how a single knight had managed to fend off their most formidable commanders. Among them, a commander stepped forward, his eyes fixed on Cyan. Cyan Vert, the commander called, his voice carrying a mixture of disdain and curiosity. Cyan lifted his head, meeting the commander's gaze. Boris, he responded, recognizing the man who had orchestrated this bloodshed. A smug look spread across Boris's face. You've put up quite a fight, Cyan. But it's over now. From thin air, Cyan drew his sword, the blade gleaming ominously despite the chaos around them. Who made you do this to me, Boris? Was it the Emperor, he demanded, an ominous aura beginning to envelop his body. Boris shielded his face with his arm, grimacing at the dark fog emanating from Cyan. That black fog of yours is sickening, he spat. The rumors were true. You are an assassin from Mist. Mist, the clandestine organization, elusive and deadly as fog, feared by the Knights of Light. Boris's voice dripped with contempt as he continued, I'll report to the higher-ups that I've eliminated an impure being affiliated with the heathens. Cyan's eyes narrowed. You can make your report when you still have a mouth to speak with, he retorted. I promise you, you won't have a single tooth left after this. Boris sneered. If you plan to use your secret power, give up now. There's a ninth star magic barrier cast around this area. Inwardly, Cyan knew he needed to escape, to reveal the true culprit behind this treachery to his brother but there was no room for doubt. His fierce eyes locked onto Boris. Hell just pierced through your barrier, he declared. Before the clash could escalate, a commanding voice rang out. Stop. Both men turned to see a figure clad in golden armor approaching. Cyan's eyes widened in surprise and confusion. He recognized the man, a reputable warrior whose presence demanded respect. Live for the clan, his father had always said. And by extension, his brother Ashel was the clan. Ashelvert's success was Cyan's success. The man in golden armor had blonde hair and stared at Cyan. Realization dawned upon Cyan, Ashel was behind it all. This revelation made his legs weak. Ashel, the man in golden armor, commented, Cyan, you seem confused now that I'm here. Cyan looked at him, desperation in his eyes. What is the meaning of this, Ashel? Ashel's expression softened slightly. You've carried out your duties well, Cyan. For the clan. For the people. And for me. Cyan's heart sank as he understood what was coming. I don't understand. Have I done something wrong? Wrong? Ashel echoed, his voice hardening. Look at that ominous fog you emit. You're nothing more than a murderer. Can you even still be called human? Cyan's mind reeled. The words murderer and sin echoed in his head. He had helped Ashel through countless trials, the succession fight within the empire, the demon king army's raid, the war to unify the continent. He had served his brother, lived for his brother. Fury overtook him, and he punched the ground. Slowly, Cyan stood up, dark aura oozing from his body. Driven by rage, his fog grew more intense. Blood pooled at his feet, but he didn't care if his body broke down. He would give everything he had now, if it meant destroying Ashel. Crimson mist covered the whole area, painting the sky red. The knights watched in shock at the sheer amount of mana Cyan still possessed. It was impossible for a human. The hero is trying to kill his younger brother out of fear, Cyan narrated, his voice filled with anger. Aren't you ashamed of yourself, Ashel? Ashel's face contorted with fury, veins visible. Cyan launched at him with incredible speed, attacking relentlessly. Ashel deflected with his sword, but Cyan only needed one chance, one chance to stab Ashel's weak point and stop his regeneration. Their fight continued, Cyan's attack meeting a magic barrier. He hadn't expected his strongest blow to be blocked. Glancing around, he saw Boris assisting Ashel, reinforcing the barrier. You're a poor bastard, Ashel sneered, suddenly driving his sword into Cyan's stomach. Cyan gasped, dropping his dagger as pain surged through him. I wanted to give you a painless death, Cyan. Because you're my brother. But now you've shown your true colors. Cyan's expression revealed his heartbreak at Ashel's words. Ashel twisted the sword and kicked him, pulling the blade free and leaving Cyan lying on the ground. Blood pooled beneath him as Ashel walked away, leaving him to his fate. Cyan's mind raced as he lay there, blood pooling around him. Was this his end? He pondered the foolishness of his life, calling himself stupid. 
But as consciousness began to slip away, a surge of determination flared within him. He would not die here. Not like this. With a guttural scream, Cyan forced himself to his feet and chased after Ashel. His brother sensed the movement and turned just in time to see Cyan's dagger inches from his throat. Cyan released all his remaining power in that single, desperate attack. But before the blade could strike, a powerful force blew him away. He lost consciousness. A voice pierced through the darkness. Young Master Cyan. Cyan's eyes snapped open. He was drenched in sweat, his breath coming in ragged gasps. A maid stood before him, scolding him for oversleeping. Get your act together, Cyan. You need to get ready, she chided. He blinked in surprise. Emily? What are you doing here? Emily looked equally surprised. Cyan's mind raced as he realized something. It had been twenty years since he last saw her, yet she looked exactly the same. His surroundings, too, were familiar. It was the room he had lived in as a child, unchanged. Emily called his name again, snapping him out of his reverie. Are you stalling because you don't want to go to training? Make up your mind and get going. Cyan, bewildered, asked, what training? In the Vert clan duchy, Cyan looked around, certain he had been transported back to his past. Was this what people meant when they said your life flashes before your eyes before death? He remembered the year, 985 Marchinist, 27 years ago. It was a year before he entered the academy. Every year, the duchy held a dual training session, a significant event attended by his father, Duke Vert. His opponent was Krantz Vert, his half-brother, the same age as Cyan. Krantz's mother, Margaret Ezra, was the duke's wife. As Cyan prepared for the training session, he couldn't shake the feeling of impending fate. He had a second chance, a chance to change everything. And this time, he would not let betrayal define his life. Despite being one of the youngest, Krantz Vert, Cyan's half-brother, received all the attention. Cyan was considered a bastard son, and after being mocked in their duel, he became the laughingstock of the duchy. The duel's outcome led to their father ignoring Cyan, turning him into an outcast within his own family. As the duel began, Emily, the loyal maid, whispered to Cyan, suggesting he should surrender. Young Cyan, determined and resolute, assured her it was okay. He just needed to win. In his mind, her suggestion felt like a condescending look down on him. Gripping his weapon, a rapier, Cyan noticed it felt heavy. He realized his strength was the same as when he was at that age. The sensation was not like a dream or a memory flashing before his eyes, it felt real. He had never heard of a magic spell capable of creating such strong illusions. He wondered if he had truly been sent back to the past. Krantz sneered, so, you didn't run off from the duel after all. Cyan thought to himself that this could be his chance to change the future. He looked at his father, Duke Vert, who declared the start of the match. Krantz attacked first, confident that he would hit his mark. Where are you looking, Cyan? Krantz taunted as he lunged forward. Cyan stood his ground, observing his brother. To him, Krantz moved like a snail. He shifted his stance slightly, and Krantz missed, stumbling past him. Infuriated, Krantz accused Cyan of dodging like a coward. Before Krantz could react further, Cyan struck his hand, sending Krantz's sword flying. With a swift kick to the shin, Krantz fell to the ground, groaning in pain and clutching his knees. Margaret Ezra, Krantz's mother, cried out in worry. Cyan knew that if he placed his sword at Krantz's throat, the duel would be over. But he gripped his sword tightly, recalling how Krantz had bullied him mercilessly, even at the academy. He decided he needed to make sure Krantz could never do anything like that again. Krantz, now terrified with tears streaming down his face, lay in pain. The duel ended with Krantz's loss. The duke ordered Cyan to see him, freeing up his schedule for this meeting. Cyan pondered if his victory was really that impressive. A high-class knight named Jokin, directly affiliated with the duke, escorted him. As they walked through the hallway, they encountered Margaret Ezra. It was clear she had spoken to the duke about her son. Cyan grinned when he saw the look on her face, as if she had stepped in something foul. Is Krantz okay? Cyan asked, feigning concern. Margaret's fury was palpable. You dare ask such a question after beating your brother like that? You're thick-skinned, Cyan. That's how duels are. Cyan said. She brushed past him, muttering, this is why bastards shouldn't be treated like legitimate children. With a devilish grin, Margaret continued, like mother, like son. Your mother is a dirty whore. You should be on the streets begging for food instead of daring to put up a fight. Cyan's eyes narrowed with murderous intent. She had crossed the line. He pondered if he should kill her right there but restrained himself. Instead, a grin flashed across his face. He knew how to make her suffer slowly, painstakingly slowly. Are you aware that I'm going to the academy with Krantz? he asked. Margaret's eyes narrowed. What's your point? 
I'm sure you want your son to graduate with all his limbs, right? Or maybe you're not that worried about him. Ha, huh, Duchess. Her rage boiled over. She raised her hand to slap him, calling him a vulgar piece of filth, but Jokin's arm blocked her. Jokin apologized to the Duchess, explaining that the Duke had urgently summoned Cyan. With a stern expression, he told the Duchess they had to leave. The Duchess remained silent, for the Duke's orders were absolute. Cyan peeked from behind Jokin, laughing. He was protected by the guard knight, a knight who not wanted to submit even to the Duke's wife. Cyan thought of how nice and reliable Jokin was. The door to the Duke's chamber opened, and the Duke himself told them to come in. Cyan entered the room, his heart pounding. He greeted the Duke.